Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I am your host, a relentless self-improving boulangerie owner from Belgium with low-grade narcolepsy and a penchant for buggery, Dr. Yukon Suckett. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. You're too kind. You can't suck it. Word to your mother. So I'm broadcasting to you once again from my secret underground headquarters. And I'm bringing to you another deck from the Platinum Mythic ranked list over at uh, Magic GG. This one is a gruel deck that was just posted today. And uh, I've been looking forward to these since the... Uh, Dominaria United was released. This seems, I think this is the first list. So here we go. We got our rule list, and it is standard 2023 approved and ready to go. So let's take a look at this list, figure out what the cards do, and then we'll take it out on the track and see how well it does. At the low end, we've got Kumano faces Kakazan. So this is a Saga card. First turn, it does one point of damage to each opponent and each Planeswalker they control. Second turn, any creature you cast gets. Well, the first creature you cast gets a plus one, plus one counter on it. And the last turn, he transforms into a hasty 2-2. Two, two. And if that a creature dealt damage by the source would die, you exile it instead. So suck it, creatures that get damaged by etching of Kumano. We got Strangle, which is three points of damage to target creature or Planeswalker for one, but it is sorcery speed. We got Ascendant, Pack Leader, who's a single drop. 2-1. Uh, when he enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter, if, it, if you control a permanent with a mana value of four or greater, you'd have to have anything over in these two columns right there. So he could potentially come out as a 3-2. Whenever you cast a spell with a mana value of four or greater, you put a plus one, plus one counter on him. Doesn't look like we have that many creatures that are four or greater, so good luck, Ascent Pack Leader. Tamiyo Safekeeping. This is the Trixie card that keeps green decks in the running. Uh, you pay a single one, target permanent you control against, hexproof and indestructible till the end of the turn. In this case, you gain two life. There's been a lot of these over the years. This is the newest version that we're still allowed to play in standard. We gain two life, but it also keeps whatever creature you got alive. Uh, we got lightning strike, three points of damage to any target for two mana. That's nice and clean. Uh, Quirion, beast caller. Hello? Hello, is the beast there? I'm looking for the beast. Uh, so for two mana, you got a 2-2. Two, two, and whenever you put a whenever you put a beast into play, or a creature into play, then it gains plus one, plus one. So that means you can put out multiple dudes. It would just keep getting those plus one, plus one counters. And then when it dies, you distribute those plus one, plus one counters to uh, any number of target creatures you control. So hopefully you still got some guys out when this thing dies. Nice. And who did you call? Looks like bear. It's like, hello, I'm looking for a bear. And then like three squirrels. Because, you know, if a bear is not around, squirrels are what you're going to look for. All right, got Yavamaya Iconoclast. Mostly because she has such awesome armor. I'm sure that totally protects you. Uh, but you got a 3-2 two for two. Excellent. It's got trample. Great. But even more so, if you got a red, you can kick it. Kick it. Mm-mm-mm. Anyways, uh, when Yava my Iconoclast enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, it gets an additional plus one and haste until the end turn. But the good thing about haste is you only need it on your first turn, so that's as good as haste can be. But that plus one, plus one counter being gone, or not counter, but just that being gone, that kind of sucks, but whatevs. We get our we get our juice out of it, right? Uh, Kessig, Naturalist, two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever it attacks, you, attack, you put an additional red or green into your mana pool. And uh, you don't lose it till the end of your turn, I suspect. Um, and it can wolf out, become a 3-3. Other wolves and werewolves you control get plus one, plus one. So this guy is pretty awesome becoming a wolf and werewolf lord during the nighttime phase of your turns. All right, we got Reckless Stormseeker, who is a werewolf, which means the Kess of Naturalist would totally pass out a lot of great stuff to him. The werewolf can wolf out himself, but as it is by itself, it's a 2, 3 for 3. And it has the ability to pass out plus 1, plus 0, and haste to itself or others at the beginning of each combat. 
Uh, this, for a long time, has been probably one of the best cards in red, so I'm glad we still have it inside this particular version of Gruul. The um, wolf version of it does the same, except for passes plus 2, plus 0, oh, trample, and haste until the end of the turn. So even better. And it's 3-4. All right, Squee, one of my favorite new red cards. Uh, jumps out there, acts like Adeline, right? Because... When it attacks, it get, puts out a plus one, plus one, or a one, one red goblin token that's tapped and attacking. Uh, it's got haste and it's a two, two. Unfortunately, Squee can be killed rather easily. Uh, but the good news is that you got enough things in your graveyard. Four mana will bring Squee back and he's got haste and he can come at it again. So it's not so bad if Squee dies because Squee can just keep on going like an Energizer bunny. We got Tolvar, the dire overlord, who does not like Squee very much. Yet, they're getting along for the sake of your deck. Three mana gets you a 3-3. Three, three. And whenever a wolf or werewolf you deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. That's why. I thought he... I only got one card out of attack. I thought he did it for each creature that attacks. But it has to be a wolf or a werewolf that does damage to the player. So anyways, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more wolves or werewolves, it becomes knight. So he automatically makes things into awesome land. And then transform any number of human werewolves you control. And then at which point then uh, he becomes a 4-4. Four, four. He does the same thing with drawing cards. But you can also use your mana to pump your wolves and werewolves up. And give them trample like crazy. This guy is quite the general there. Thundering Raju is much like Reckless Stormseeker, but even better. He's a haste to himself. For, a, for four mana, you get a 3-3 with haste. And whenever he attacks, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Could be the Thundering Raju. But then it also deals X damage to each opponent, where X is the number of modified creatures you control other than Thundering Raju. So therefore, it behooves you to put that plus one, plus one counter on something else you control. And one of the great targets for that would be Elena and Alana, because when they are for four mana, two, three, with first strike and reach, which is great. But then at the beginning of your combat, you put, put you put X plus one plus one counters. That's like forever, man. On another target creature you control where X is its power. So if you use Thundering Raju to pump up Helena and Alana, then she then they can pump up some other creature even more. Uh see, then they gain that also thing gains haste to the turn. So yeah, Helena and Lena pass out haste, Thundering Raju. Uh, does not has haste. Reckless Stormseeker passes out haste. Iconoclast can give itself haste. Uh, let's see, Kumano has haste. So there's a lot of haste here. Who else do we have haste? A vile, a volatile arsonist. The only thing I don't like about him is that he's got quite the five head. For being a hairy dude, he is a four head sure goes way back there. Nothing against all you five heads out there. I just think he looks a little weird. All right, so this guy is for five mana. Five mana. You get a 4-4 four, four with Menace and Haste, which is a great price for all that. Uh, and then when he attacks, it deals one damage to each of up to one target creature, player, and target Planeswalker. So bam, bam, bam. That's three points of damage just doing alternatively. Hopefully, that'll account for something awesome. Um, dire Strain... When he changes into his werewolf form, it deals two damage to each of those things as well. A target creature, a planeswalker, and a player. But he's a 5-5 at that point. So, awesome, right? Awesome. Over here, then we got basic land, vacant land, pain lands, and fast dual lands. I'm not a big fan of pain lands, but we're going to try it out. Some things just seem to call for it. So anyways, that is the deck. It looks like we are hoping to come in hard and fast and overwhelm with numbers and superior strength. Let's hope it works out that way. We'll see it there. Our plane explodes. That's a name. One, two, three, keep. And we are not going to listen to goblins. Let's buff up the naturalist. Oh, 
Gonna fight against life gain. That's gonna suck. I'll attack. That'll draw us some cards. Yeah, that's green. That'll get us a pack leader. Play the new one. Excellent job. All right, Helena and Alana. We're putting it on. And we win. Jeez. Victory. All right, we're playing off with Baxter Force. Baxter Force. Two mana. Yeah, that's a lot of things that cost two mana. More or less. We'll keep it. Bone goes first. We can use more on the draw. You think those are all squeeze skeletons right there? I bet you they are. All right, keep. Now my fish is practically swimming in water over there. It's fantastic. Now don't swim with my fish, though. I don't like that. All right, slow. All right, two. That's going to land us into a Kumano. Oh, he's playing his own squee. My squee's better than your squee. There we go. Back in the olden days, when there was a legendary out, if you put down your own legendary, you would kill the first legendary. Gone. All in. Let's see if we can trick some into trying to kill. Kill, kill, kill. You're not going to do it, are you? Uh, all right. Let's put out ourselves a naturalist. I'm going to take it. All right, let's start off with a little Reckless Storm Seeker. We're just gonna go ahead and put out a single defender. All right, good times. All 
What are you playing up there, my friend? It looks like you're scared. No graveyards to rip apart. Just your own, huh? All right, what do I need to do here? Let's take out Rukathar. And then we're gonna traipse in. Let's give him haste. All attack. Green. Let's see how we can make use of this. Yeah, whatever, man. All right, who do we want to keep? I'm thinking it's the Reckless Stormseeker because he can definitely help us out. There we go. That's much better. You think we got to uh, concede here in a second? That's what I'm thinking. There we go. Winner, winner, victory dinner. I are playing against King Salmons. King, actually, it's probably King Salmon or is it Salmon? Ice will Salmon. I think it's probably Ice will Salmon. One, two, three. And some stuff. Let's keep it. All right, hasty jerkwads. Let's do some damage. Oh, there's a red one. We can actually go for Kamano without him and play it slow. There we go. Oh, that's just pain land. All right. Okay, come on. And here we go. A 3-3 three, three naturalist. Don't be countering me. Go to sleep, little dragon. All right, transform. I can use that, and let's just go to Party Town. Nice. Someone needs some haste. attack. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'll go red. Pretend like I could do something. I'm down to nine. That was a good hit. I don't like the way this guy's looking at me, though. attack. Alright, I guess that's it. The troubles never came. Victory! Our right, opponent against Cruise Fletcher. I have never heard of the name Cruise before. One, two, three. Keep. One goes first. I got anything fast, a little pain land action. That's what we do. P -p 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 pain lands! Auto pay. Yep, someone's playing with the artifact. Can we blow past this guy? I doubt it. He's going to start putting out those three ones here pretty soon. Oh, 
There's one of them. No blocks. Draw some cards. Oh, he's willing to give up the smelter. He must have one in his hand. A lot of choice there. Squee would be good, Stormseeker would be good. There's a smelter out of his hand. He's popping another. You know who needs to go is Squee. Yeah, double up. What do I got in here? Just, just one in additional to squee. All right, and we will send forth the strong man. Let's uh, pump up this guy. I'll attack. Don't wipe the board, don't wipe the board, don't wipe the board. Oh, the humanity. Not enough. Well, pulling mana right now is not the best way to go. Uh, let's see, what can you do here? Let's... No, I can't. I have to play that guy. All right, go on in. We'll take you down. How are we doing over here? I got enough. I'll take him out on my next turn when he's not expecting it. Of course, I'm going to do, what, three points of damage at that point? Oh, that's not good. All right. I guess that's it. Suck! So close. Our pen against Raflex point nine one. Whatever Raphalex is. One, two. This guy's going to be a third, potentially. Let's keep it. Pain land. We're going to be paying for everything with pain lands? Ooh, that's rough. All right, there's a third land. Let's go crazy. I'll attack. You wanna take out the etching? Feel free. You're pumped. 
Yeah, there's a nice green land, so I don't have to pay for it myself. Trample. Now we get to play a little cameo safekeeping. Altac. Let's go, let's go. Now we can keep it. Unless you're going to pump it. There you go. You're going to try to do it, huh? I, that's a bad one, man. That's just... That's just trample. Alright, let's play the naturalist so we can beef things up. Let's go all in. Sign your blockers, senor. Alright, we've cleared the board. We got nothing but a party in front of us here. And we win! See you later, Raffalex91. Victory! Alright, so here we are with the one of the newest pre was a platinum mythic rule decks from uh what is that thing called? It's called Magic GG. And uh, I gotta say, I think it played pretty darn well. I really liked it a lot. Oh, uh, who was the hero here? Let's take a look. Um, you know, it was Yavimaya Iconoclast, I think, is the one I really liked. You know what was nice about him is he had Trample. He's, he was only, even with the kicker, he was just three. And he was, what was he, a four, three with haste at that price with Trample? That was pretty, a nice amount of, um, of damage. And they threw anybody in front of him, they usually died, which was pretty, pretty cool. But the thing is, is that he wasn't just a hero. Like, it was pretty even across the board. I mean, Helena and Alana, of course, are dangerous when they come out, but we've known that for a while now. Um, Squee, especially with Helena and Alana, was fantastic. Because you get him bumped up to a place where you didn't have to worry about him dying right off the bat. Reckless Stormseeker giving out haste to everybody. Korean Beast Collar kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And if, if it were to die, it just passes out tokens to everybody. That is so, so incredibly good. It's nice having Lightning Strike doing that three points of damage to any target. Um, you know, in all the time we played, we never got Volatile Arsonist out, but there's only one card in this deck, so what are we expecting? I know when I played against him in the past, he does, a, let's see, it deals one damage up to each target creature, up to one target player, and or up to one, and it's not that, it just does one damage up to a bunch of different stuff. Plus, he's a 4-4 with Haste and Menace, so but that's pretty sweet. So all together, I mean, this is a very aggressive deck. It has zero defense whatsoever. And you just have to keep going for it. So if you're the kind of person that likes jumping at someone's throat and having a little bit more beef to you than a standard, you know, aggro deck would, this is an incredible, incredible deck. So let's give it a rating. Is this deck competitive? I picked it up off the Platinum Mythic list. So by default, I'm going to say yes. In my own trials and tribulations, I, I wouldn't say that it's like a, like a, one of those things you're going to win just the vast majority of the time. But you're going to win, you know, 60% of the time, possibly. I guess that makes it Platinum Mythic worthy. But, uh, eh. it, you know, it basically the big thing is if anybody could put up some sort of defense against this, a lot of times you just can't make it through. You really just have to overwhelm them. But still competitive. I'm giving it a checkbox for that. Number two, is this deck fun? Um, I did have fun. Mostly it's because of Squee dubious monarch that dude is just so hilarious i like the way the rest of the deck works and helps each other out things get pumped up things are fast which is also really nice too we got the haste aspect going on it it definitely was a fun deck and lastly was it interesting like it was it that much different than a standard gruel deck we were playing before which was mostly werewolves and with a little helena and alana built in there 
And uh, I think it's different enough. I think it is different. I mean, what's nice is still is highly reminiscent of a standard werewolf deck and the fact that you have Tolvar and Boltile Arsonist. Um, who else do we have in here? I mean, you got the Ascendant Pack Leader, even though he's not a werewolf, but you saw that a lot in the wolf decks. I guess, yeah, it's not a whole lot of wolves. Oh, there it is. The Keswick Naturalist is the last one. Oh, and the Reckless Storm Seeker. So there's, you know, four werewolves, an additional wolf, but you also had a bunch of new cards that were not wolf related that, I mean, really worked well with the Gruul sensibilities there. You know, Thundering Raju is always fantastic. Squee works out really well with this group. And uh, the Yava Maya Iconoclast, I thought was super cool. We talked about him already. If anything, the one thing I disliked was the pain lands. I mean, there's only two in here, yet, I mean, I think I did like six points of damage to myself just to use this one card. So I don't know. I I I don't particularly care for pain lands. It still really bothered me. But still, if, if you're a person who likes pain lands, and apparently they're fantastic, they're in here. All right, so what are we going to rate this deck? Is it interesting? Yes. Is it fun? Yes. Is it competitive? Absolutely. So that makes this deck an A+. Plus. A+, plus, I got to give it to it. So if you choose to play with this deck, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the underground secret headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. In the words of my people, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes.